IETF Newcomers Overview. Um, this is a presentation to just give you sort of uh, a kickstart on getting started in the IETF. It is not meant to cover everything that uh, it's not the history or any of those kinds of things. Uh, I am Karen O'Donohue, uh, a longtime participant in the IETF. And uh, Rich, would you like to introduce yourself and take it away? Sure. Uh, my name is Rich Sauls. I work at Akamai Technologies. I've been involved with the EDU and the newcomers for a handful of years now, I guess we'll say. Yes. <laughs> um, so Karen and I will be uh, presenting this evening, morning, afternoon, whichever time it is where you are. Um, and Karen, next slide, let's start. So first off, welcome. Uh, we're glad you're here to get a heads up and a running start or whatever uh, cliche you'd like to use. Um, as Karen said, this will give you a background. We'll lay out where the IETF fits in its whole ecosystem. Um, and then talk about what the week will be like in Singapore in about two weeks. And then end with some more resources. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is the first of two slides about the note well. Um, oops, we see. Oops, me. sorry. Oops, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> down the, the next key button. First page, one more back. Okay, great. So this. <laughs> sorry is, about that. <laughs> we're all done. Any questions? No. So <laughs> this is the first of two slides about the note well. Um, this describes the IETF policies on a number of areas outside of the technical specifications. So. It talks about um, patent requirements, i.e. if you know of any patents and you are participating in a discussion, you must disclose them. Uh, we don't want to get you know, caught by submarine patents. Um, you agree, you understand that um, the proceedings, the meetings are recorded, videotapes, and so on and available. Um, on the next slide, please. Um, and then here are some of the details about the specific policies and practices that we follow. Um, the ITF is known for a publication series known as RFCs. Uh, they started years ago, 20, 30 years ago, I guess, as a request for comments. Uh, people joke now that it means request for compliance. Um, they do not, <clears throat> an RFC, once it's published, is frozen, so that if we change and revise something, um, such as um, index version of TLS, TLS 1.2 became TLS 1.3. That's a separate RFC. HTTP 1.0 was, you know, 2660 and, and so on. Um, however, what we've done is on, layered on top of that a series of uh, indirections, right? Like any computer science problem. So there's, that's the BCP, Best Current Practices series. And that will always point to the specific RFC that is appropriate. So BCP9 talk will point to a specific RFC, I don't remember the number, um, that is how the standards process works, how the working groups pro progress. Um, then the last ones are about anti-harassment, uh, a code of conduct that we expect on mailing lists and uh, in the face-to-face -face meetings, copyright considerations, patents, and so on. Um, if you search for you know ietf bcp 54 you'll get a one of the search results will show point to the code of conduct um, all of these are on the note well link that you see there at the top of the slide um, and in the slides and in the note well they are actually hyperlinks so that you can see read the details um, this is presented before every working group meeting um, at the meetings, it's also present, It's also mentioned or referred to when there are interim meetings, such as video conferences, phone calls, or an interim face-to-face. -face. Um, so by attending and then signing the, the blue sheet, sheet of attendance, you agree to comply by these rules. Uh, next slide, please. So this week, sorry, two weeks, um, there are a number of newcomers activities. Uh, this tutorial will be representing this uh, on Sunday, 
there is another tutorial which I knew earlier today, but now I forget what it was. <laughs> also on Sunday. Um, Sunday is also the opening reception. There's free hors d'oeuvres and beer and wine, soft drinks, water, so on. Um, before then, there is a quick connections meeting, uh, which is, think of it as speed dating. There'll be a number of uh, senior or experienced IETFers there standing around different tables. Um, the newcomers are all invited. They, I think there's a sign-up list. Um, and then every 10 minutes, someone will say time and you move to the next table. So that will give you, you know, chance to answer questions. Oh, I'm interested in the security area. Who can I talk to? What do I, who can tell me about how DNS works and, you know, deploy, deployment issues in DNS. Um, the guide mentoring is also a sign up where you have someone, pardon me, who's available throughout the whole week to help orient you um, and uh, point out, you know, things of interest or help make connections to other people. Um, that, can, that are appropriate. Um, those are based by, you know, we try to group them by language so that, you know, someone speaking French is not stuck with someone like me who can only speak English. Right? Um, and uh, that's a, there's a sign up list for that. You probably got email about these activities and it should have included that. Uh, there is a dinner organized Monday night that's run by the Secretariat. I'll talk about those people in a bit. Um, it's nominal fee, 25 bucks, and it's new, 25 US dollars. It's um, newcomers only. And so it's a chance to meet some peers and you know, say, oh, what are you doing this week? And, and you know, make some contacts with people who are also in a, a new, newcomer situation. Uh, Thursday morning during the open meeting time is a feedback session. That's where you can come and tell us uh, I'll be there, Karen, Karen and I are both going to attempt to be there. Um, what you liked about the week, what you didn't like, um, what worked well, how you, what, what we could do to better prepare you for, or prepare your peers for the next meeting. Um, we take a lot of feedback. We try to get a lot of feedback and we take it very seriously after each IETF um, and before the next one, it's all rolled in and the slides are periodically updated, the tutorials and the activities as well. Next slide, please. So um, the, goal, the goal here, and again, there's a link for more information, is we want to make it uh, informative and useful to you as you attend your first, second, first-ish IETF meeting. Um, for many things, the IETF considers the age of majority, similar to the voting age, um, is, you know, if you've been through if this is one of your first five meetings, um, then you can still consider yourself a newcomer if you want to. If, you, if we did such a great job and you hit the ground running and now at the end of the week you've committed to read three internet drafts and co-author a, a fourth one, you know, you don't need, you don't need any more help. Uh, but we try to be very welcoming. We try to really encourage people. Um, and in the main, the middle section, um, Karen will talk a lot about strategies, how to make the most of the meeting. Um, we do remote participation as well as in-person stuff. This, this presentation um, will not talk about the history of the ITF, how to write a standard, things like that. Um, the ITF has a YouTube channel where you can find all of the previous versions or many of the previous versions of this tutorial. Um, probably won't find too many different speakers, unfortunately, <laughs> um, as well as all of the meeting sessions. Karen is laughing. Um, as well as all of the meeting sessions, they are recorded by the fine folks at Meet Echo here. Um, we should thank Tobaya for staying up at 2 a.m. over in Europe. Um, and uh, so if you have a conflict and you find that there's two sessions you want to attend that are done at the same time, you can attend one and then go back a couple days later and watch the YouTube video of that same session, of the other session. Um, that has the advantage that you can, you know, speed it up, run it, you know, one and a half times or, or skip whole sections. If, it's, if there's only, if you're only interested in one particular draft, you can skip to the parts you're interested in. 
Next slide, please. So let me talk about the, the ecosystem. Um, uh, next slide. So the mission of the IETF, um, and we have a mission statement, um, we want to make the internet work better. And the way we do that is we are engineers for the most part, um, is we have some product managers, almost no salespeople, I don't think. <laughs> uh, we want to make the internet work better by, writing, by developing high quality, relevant technical documents um, that influence the way people design, use, and manage the internet. Um, relevant meaning uh, we're not going to discuss uh, how the browser should lay out a file choice combo box. You know, that would be, if anywhere, that might be in W3C. Um, high quality, there's a process for how, the, or how documents are developed and published and become RFCs. Uh, we can talk about that you know, during the week, or you'll learn during the week, um, or see a, one of us, you know, after, um, after Sunday's tutorial. Um, and the, the key word I would take from the sentence is influence the way people design, use, and manage the internet. Um, one of the phrases you'll hear mentioned sometimes is someone will go, well, what if people don't do this, do it this way? Um, and the answer is, well, we're not the protocol police. We have no um, authority to, to, in, to make people do things. Um, we can influence them. We can explain why this is the best way. Um, but if they choose to go another way, there's nothing we can do to stop that. What we get is we get leverage from the fact that everyone on the internet, if it's a public standard, is you know derived from the RFCs. And so if you want to play along with everyone else, then you just have no choice but to, you know, participate and follow, you know, what the IETF does. Um, we are not like uh, the Uniform Commercial Code uh, UN Treaty level thing, which describes how international commerce should work with, in, with um, you know, compliance, a way to force compliance under penalty of law or something like that. Uh, next slide, please. So what is the ITF? We are an organization that we develop standards, SDO, Standards Development Organization. Um, Self-selected participants, it's all on an indi individual basis. Um, company affiliation, if any, is given for identification purposes only so that uh, you can help remember that Ben at Akamai is different from Ben at, I don't remember where Ben Campbell works, but. Yeah, you know, it's designed to identify, and it's also a way you can say, "Oh, hey, I heard it look, looks like you got a new job. Congratulations!" And they still come to the ITF. Um, there is no formal membership. If you want to participate in something in a group, for example, uh, you join the mailing list. If there's many groups you want to participate in, you join all the mailing lists. Um, there is no formal voting. Um, if you look at say ISO, which does voting by uh, country or nation state. Um, or ANSI, which does it by corporate membership, or W3C, which does it by membership. We don't have any of that kind of voting. We do consensus, and we do that by humming. Humming has a number of neat properties. Uh, you can't look to see who's humming, so you can't look to see who else's hand is up and be influenced by that. You, it's hard to hum really, really loudly. Uh, it's also, you know, everyone kind of hums at the same volume. So when we say yes or no, and we hum appropriately, you can sort of stand almost anywhere in the room and get a feel, a good, you know, rough consensus as to what the room believes. Uh, there is no formal government role. There used to be, uh, obviously, uh, in the domain system and so on, and that's a separate organization, ICANN. Um, for a while, the DOD helped, you know, sponsor the IETF stuff. And, and provided a home for it. But the US government plays no role any different than anybody else. We do have government people involved. We've seen people from the British Standards Institute, um, from Deutsche, um, a lot of you know Asian governments or banks, you know, and, and or government-owned banks send people. The US DOD sends people, but they are as individuals participate. Um, our goal is to develop a standard going back as mentioned on the previous page, 
that is relevant and useful. So if we define a standard and it's never deployed, even if it's the best specification ever, that will be treated as a failure. The real standard, the real measure of success is it's a standard that people use. Um, as I said, we're focused on internet technology, capital I internet, um, and it's from the bottom up. Uh, people who have something they wanna work on, um, propose it, it gets accepted. If it gets accepted and then the coalition of people in, in the working group will prepare documents and it will flow its way up through the working group, through the area and up to the IETF as a whole. Um, we're pretty unique. We're pretty proud of that. Um, and I guess the next slide. Okay, so the IETF is divided into, I have to count this number every time I see the slide, seven areas. Um, they tend to, there's occasionally slight perturbation. Um, applications used to be one, real time used to be another, they got merged. This is what we would call an eye chart. There's a lot of, you know, if you imagine this being projected on a screen at the front of the room, there'd be lots of really teeny tiny print and you have to squint to read it. I'm not gonna go through them. I'll point out that the operations area is people interested in deployment and deployment of the protocols. Uh, what it's like to run a DNS server, what it's like to do um, routing. And that's different from the people defining the routing protocols or defining the DNS protocols. Um, security is more of a horizontal area in that uh, these days, everything has to have some kind of security, which means some kind of cryptography or encryption or authentication involved. Um, and then the last one is the, um, the self-referential, the meta group. This is where we work on things that change the way the IETF itself works. Uh, next slide. Consensus. So this is another one of the truisms that IETFers like, quotes rather. We reject King's presence in voting. We leave in rough consensus and running code. And the key point is that last phrase, rough consensus and running code. Uh, over the past few years, we have got added more and more effort and more and more participation in hackathons, which happened the weekend before the meeting, Saturday, Sunday. Um, there is a wiki page which talks about the projects people want to bring. We've had prototypes, we've had TLS, Quick, um, TEEP, which is a connection protocol to talk to, you know, um, Secure Zone or SGX enclaves. Um, many things happen there. Uh, bring your laptop, sit down with a group of people in the same area and start hacking away. Uh, rough consensus means we listen to all the opinions. Um, we don't have to accommodate everybody and, and it's not controlling. That's different from say other standards organizations where, you know, when you're doing voting, if you want to get everybody to vote on something, you end up with a standard that's got, well, this seems kind of strange, but he wanted it, right? Sort of like the U.S. tax code. They wanted this thing done, and they didn't want that thing done. You know, it's a lot of negotiation. Here, we're trying to focus solely on the soul, on the technical merits, and again, the focus on what most of the people in the group feel. Uh, the session chair is responsible for building or checking consensus, the area directors will often step in. Um, on At the meetings, almost every time there's a consensus discussion, um, the chairs will then say, okay, we'll confirm that on the mailing list. For the most part, the mailing lists for every working group are the place as the official record and the place where all of the, all of the official decisions are taken into account. And of course, there's an RFC on how to do consensus and humming. Uh, one thing you'll find that's funny is people will just spout out, you know, hey, have you considered how this would be affected by RC 2616? And everyone else thinks, oh, yeah, right. And, you know, they know all the numbers. I don't know all the numbers. <laughs> Next slide, please. The culture. Uh, you can see that the dress code is pretty informal. It means you can wear whatever you are comfortable with in a professional environment. Um, Obviously, there you know there's some a lot of people wear t-shirts, a lot of people wear shorts or short skirts or long skirts. 
um, dashikis. Uh, there are a couple of people who dress in three-piece suits all week. Um, it's whatever people are comfortable with. The key thing is technical excellence is what we care about. Um, we you know, don't, and we have close relationships. So the combination of those first two, actually the combination of the first, second, and fourth means that sometimes we'll get some heated discussions. Uh, you know, I've been working with you forever and this just, it doesn't affect, you know, what the, um, you know, that decision you made here is stupid. We don't want to talk like that. We want to say, no, that decision is not good and here's why. But these are people who many of them have been working together for 25 plus years. Um, so they can be frank. They can speak in shorthand. Um, don't be put off by it. Just sort of, you know, listen. And then if you have something technical to say, just please, by all means, speak up. Uh, next page. The alphabet soup. So this is the ecosystem in which the IETF works. Um, the IETF is that blue um, circle on the right that is, um, you know, what we think of as the IETF looks like cell division. Um, each area, as I mentioned, there's seven of them. Working groups are all within an area, and they pro that's where the documents get published. The IESG, Internet Engineering Steering Group, um, is the technical leadership of the IETF and has the all of the RFCs or would-be RFCs flow through the ISG before going out to the general membership mailing list uh, for you know review or final comment. There's the IRTF. Um, also, you can see on the right on the left-hand side, the pink square is there's the IRSG, the Internet Research Steering Group. Uh, this is analogous to the IETF, but whereas the ITF is working on standards and best practices. The IRSG is working on research for things that may be picked up by other groups or may just be areas of interest. Um, human rights and internet protocols is sort of general interest. Crypto forum research group is defined, is looking at cryptographic algorithms that are then picked up and used by other things. The LLC, the black square on the top, uh, first, the IAB, the red square above, has general oversight of those of the other areas, and the LLC is the legal entity that runs and hosts all of these other things. Um, it didn't used to be a legal entity. We used to be a, an unaffiliated organ, an unorganized organization, um, part of, say, the Internet Society, but that made it hard if the IETF wanted to sign a hotel contract for 1,200 people for a week. We needed a legal entity to do that, as opposed to relying on the I ISOC. So we have a formal legal entity now, a legal liability corporation, a particular type of corporation. Um, you generally don't care about it, but it's the board of directors is you know five people who sign the checks or hire somebody to sign the checks. Next slide. Uh, I mentioned what they all do. I, I will just skip this in the interest of time. Next slide. And uh, I guess we'll turn it over to Karen now. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what happens during an IETF week. Um, there's, uh, and I'm going to hit these briefly, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail in the subsequent slides. Um, there are a number of organized events that are on the agenda uh, during the week. Uh, first, the biggest um, and sort of the meat of the meeting are all of the various working group sessions. Uh, a, a significant subset of the active working groups in the IETF will meet during IETF week, but not necessarily all of them. Uh, there's also birds of a feather sessions identified on the agenda, you know, by the, acro by the acronym BOF. And I'll talk a little bit more about what those are. Uh, Rich mentioned the IRTF as opposed to the IETF. There will also be, in addition, uh, some number of research groups meeting, um, and those are identified on the agenda by the RG uh, acronym on the agenda list. Uh, there are some area-wide sessions. You know, we talked about the IETF having various areas, uh, the, the seven areas, and some of those areas have meetings that are across all of the working groups for the whole area. 
uh, there's and then there's IETF wide uh, plenaries. Then there's the hackathon and code sprint activities in the in the weekend prior. Uh, there are various sets of social events, uh, and then there's also uh, tutorials. Sometimes there are deep dives, and sometimes there's various lunch sessions. Um, there's the hot RFC lightning talks, uh, which gives you sort of a really quick uh, introduction to new work that people are considering. Uh, and then there's side meetings and open time. And those are all sort of organized official events. Um, and then there's all the events that are not organized. Um, there's the hallway meetings, um, bar boffs, uh, which are informal gatherings in various places. Sometimes they'll get announced on a mailing list. Sometimes there'll be a group of people that uh, with coordinated interests that get together, uh, editing sessions on documents. Um, also, there is an app. Uh, there is both an Android and a, an Apple iPhone version of the app. Um, it's very helpful for, you know, figuring out where meetings are and, and finding where it, it has a map, usually has a map of the venue so you can look at where your meeting is in the context of that sort of and rich will talk a little bit more later about data tracker but you know that's sort of your one-stop shop for everything that you need to know about what's going on itf week um and and that's available uh there uh so anyway specific starting with there's uh, working group sessions so um if you recall earlier the iesg has areas and areas has working groups each working group has um, a charter for the work that uh, would be done in the context of that working group and the meeting that happens during the week uh, depends heavily on how, where the working group is in that charter. Uh, they will be, uh, most of the work is done on the mailing lists in between meetings. Face-to-face uh, -face, face meetings are tried to be focused on uh, solving key issues. So uh, if there's, you know, oftentimes the, the editor of the document or the author of a document will get up and, you know, these are the issues that have been identified on the mailing list recently that, that, uh, that merit further discussion or merit real time conversation at that point. Um, this, all the sessions are streamed and recorded. Uh, the technology that you will use uh, uh, to do that is, is meet echo. So all of the meet echo sessions will be recorded and, and you can get to them later. Uh, and this is the bulk of the work in the in the in the IETF. Uh, now, generally speaking, it, it's not going to be um, tutorials about documents. It's going to be resolving issues on existing documents or introducing new documents that the working group may choose to adopt. Uh, second is a birds of a feather session. A little bit later in this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about bringing new work to the IETF. Uh, birds of a feather sessions are. Um, the, 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 historically, the, the term comes from birds of a feather flock together, which basically means a group of people interested in a similar topic. Uh, it often precedes the formation of a working group. So it's one of the steps to getting a working group established. Um, if that, if it is a working group forming birds of a feather session, it will include discussion of a proposed working group charter, but sometimes it, it's not, um, uh, Sometimes it's it's for discussing other types of topics. Uh, we had a um, you know a couple examples. We had a birds of a feather session one time on where to go with the uh, education and mentoring activities in the IETF, and we had another one about uh, you know network requirements for the meeting. Both these are clearly not working group meetings, but they were uh, meetings that have broad applicability. Um, Generally, a group of people that are interested in a topic will propose it, and then the area directors will review all of the proposals in advance of the IETF and, and choose which ones actually get to meet. Uh, generally, a, a BOF only meets once. Occasionally, they'll, they might meet twice if, if they get part of the way through the chartering discussion and they decide that you know, they're really not ready to charter a working group, they may go back and try one more time. Um, next thing is the IRTF research group sessions. Uh, these are officially an activity of the Internet Architecture Board. Um, they are more research topics as opposed to, to engineering topics. Uh, they could, as Rich mentioned, it could be something like the, the CFRG, which is a crypto one. Uh, there's one on global access 
Global Internet Access for All, Gaia, which is really about uh, global internet access. Um, there was uh, one on de uh, delay tolerant networking. Uh, there's currently one on privacy. Um, they meet during IETF meetings. Um, they're open to uh, IETF attendees, just like uh, the uh, regular IETF working group meetings are. There is a uh, RFC on uh, a primer for for IETF participants. If you're interested in the in the research angle of it, um, area wide sessions, plenaries, and invited talks. So often the areas will have meetings that are across the whole area. Uh, a good example of that is the security area advisory group, which meets uh, usually on Thursday after lunch. Uh, and this is a session that uh, where you might get a quick snapshot of all of the working groups that are doing, that are in the security area or that are outside of the security area that are doing security work. And then uh, presentations of uh, material that is interest of interest to the whole area or discussions of topics that the security community in general at the IETF need to have. Um, I know transport area has one. I believe the applications area has one as well. Um, and so those would be area wide. And then IETF wide generally is the plenary. There's two types of plenaries. Um, that there's a technical plenary, uh, which is generally chaired by the uh, IAB. Uh, there may or may not be a technical plenary with any particular IETF meeting. Uh, these are generally focused on topics that are of interest across the entire IAB, uh, in, across the uh, entire IETF. Uh, recently, we've had one on uh, privacy, for example. Um, we've had one previously on uh, uh, global internet access. Um, uh, I think one time we had one on uh, automotive uh, IoT types of topics. Uh, I don't believe there is a technical plenary planned for this upcoming IETF, but um, often the two plenaries are held together. Uh, the second type of plenary is the administrative plenary, and that's the one that basically goes, is the report out to the community about all of the administrative aspects of the IETF, and then discussion about uh, general policies and, and administration of the IETF um, at that plenary, there's also a uh, question and answer session, what they call an open mic. And you see the picture on the lower right, it says IESG open mic. It's an opportunity for the community, the IETF community to ask questions of the, of the three bi basic bodies of leadership, which is the administrative or the LLC, uh, the IAB, and then the IESG. Um, so those are the, the plenaries. Um, also, uh, there's, uh, if there's a host, there might be an invited lunch talk. Um, it's a brown bag lunch, so you have to bring your own lunch, but uh, it's usually Thursday at lunchtime is the, is the uh, invited speaker. Um, hackathons and code sprints. Hackathons, as Rich mentioned earlier, is something we started a few years ago. Um, and these, uh, basically, anybody is open to bring a project. Um, anybody who doesn't have a project is, is welcome to come and participate. There's no additional cost. They do ask that you sign up in advance, and that's for, you know, capacity and food planning purposes and all of that. The hackathon uh, can be topics that are uh, something new that people want to try to develop a little bit before they perhaps bring it to the IETF as a technology. Uh, it might be uh, the working group, uh, it might be initial implementations or interoperability uh, analysis of existing work in working groups. Uh, a number of working groups now are using the hackathon to help progress their specifications. Um, and then it also might be uh, tools around the, uh, you know, I, I know that there was a, a hackathon project recently on improving the Android app for the IETF meeting. Separate from that is the code sprint. There's a whole set of tools that are developed by the community for the IETF. And there's a team of developers that have specifically been working on that for a number of years. And so if you're interested in, in approving 
tools or working on data track or doing any number of things related to that, uh, then that's part of the code sprint. Both of those, um, the code sprint is on Saturday, the hackathon is on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and it's a great way, especially for newcomers, the hackathon is a great way to, to come in and, and uh, sort of get your feet wet with the community in a small way before you uh, jump in. Um, next is networking and social events. Uh, depending on the host and a number of other factors, there may or may not be a social event. There is one in Singapore, it'll be on Tuesday evening. Um, generally, there's a ticket attached to that. It's that covers some of the cost. Um, and those tickets sometimes can turn into hot items depending on how big the, the capacity plant, how big the venue is for the social. Um, but it's usually, it's, it's a nice opportunity to have, uh, you know, an evening out with seven to 900 of <laughs> your colleagues. <laughs> um, there's also uh, networking. There, there is an organization. It's not really an organization. It's more like a mailing list and a loose collective of uh, folks called the Sisters. Sisters is a uh, is basically just a way for the the women of the IETF to meet each other. Uh, we're focused uh, we, on on helping women connect with each other and, and be more effective in the IETF. Particularly interested in in supporting newcomers in whatever way we can. Um, on the current agenda for this IETF, there is a sister's lunch on Thursday. Uh, and we've also added a breakfast networking event earlier in the week. I believe it's on Monday morning. Um, there's a link later on to join the sister's mailing list if you want more information about that. Um, and then there's uh, side meetings. And this is open time. It, it's it's a, uh, basically it's an ongoing agenda experiment to figure out how to make IETF meetings more uh, productive and, and get, make better use of our time. Uh, those meetings are not going to show up on the main agenda. They're going to be in this wiki. Uh, and so you, you can go in there and see what meetings. Anybody can propose a meeting and sign up for space. Uh, obviously, there's, there's space limitations. And I know the last two meetings where they did this, the side meetings filled up. Um, the first time they did this, it was in like an afternoon, like a Wednesday afternoon, but they changed it. And so the last time and this time as well, it's the, it's in the mornings before the sessions start. So there's, there's opportunity for side meetings. Uh, I mean, you can organize your own side meeting anytime you want, but if you want space, you know, if you want to be able to get a meeting room that's you know provided by the IETF, then this is the way to do that. Uh, there are some tutorials. Uh, generally, they're on Sunday afternoon. Um, the, um, this time there's a newcomers overview, which is this uh, tutorial. Uh, and then there's also a tutorial on service discovery. Um, and then the last couple IETFs, we've had an experiment on deep dives, which has taken a specific technical topic and, and delving into it a little bit more deeply. Um, this time it's not actually a technical topic. Um, and it's not actually a deep dive, but that time slot on Tuesday morning is being used for the, uh, evolution of the RFC series editor module. Um, and I specific, I mentioned lightning talks earlier. Um, if you attend other uh, conferences, you know, the concept of a lightning talk is usually uh, you know, like five minutes or less that basically uh, gets you uh, a little bit of exposure. Here's something I'm interested in. Here's an idea that I have. And if you're interested in working with me further or discussing this further, here's how you contact me. Um, and so it, it um, is a good way to see what other people are thinking about. It's also a good way if you are interested in trying to find the right people at the IETF and you have some ideas, then you could, you could propose a lightning talk. Um, and it's Sunday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, it's, it's turned into a very useful and productive uh, activity. Um, so general meeting etiquette. Um, obviously, it's, you can't follow everything, but it's, I'm most people come to the IETF interested in one or two of the working groups. So you want to join the mailing list, you want to read the mailing list, and then you want to read uh, the documents of interest before the working group sessions. Uh, and that'll uh, mean that any questions that you ask would be uh, informed by that. Um, and we want you to um, behave respectfully and tolerantly towards all participants. Um, 
IETF is a global organization. People come from a lot of different backgrounds and, and cultures. And, um, you know, I think the, what the, uh, what was it, the John Postel uh, quote about, you know, being, being uh, generous and being careful in what you, you know, generous in what you receive and careful what you send. I, I, can't, I just got it wrong, but I can't think of it right now. But basically, you know, uh, uh, be respectful, uh, talk and listen to people. Uh, sometimes, you know, some IETF people can appear a little bit gruff, but uh, in general, they're are, they are very approachable. Um, and these are people that are very passionate about their work and they're, they're very interested in, in working with people and talking to people that are interested in their work. So um, enjoy yourself and remember to sleep because it can be a long week. Um, so just as an extra slide on, on bringing new work to the IETF, um, the, uh, you know, the first step is, you know, you, you have your idea uh, there. <laughs> Uh, you have your idea uh, or the thing that you are interested in approaching. So the first thing you really need to do is to sort of expand your collaborators outside of, of your core group. Uh, so you want to find some collaborators that have a similar interest um, and discuss the idea with them. Uh, then you want to write some initial drafts, maybe, maybe have some barb offs. Um, and this is all about uh, developing sort of a critical mass of people that think this is a good idea and the time is right to do it. Um, if you, you know, if you come along, you know, for example, um, if, if you come along and, and something is really far down the pike, then, then coming into the working group and saying, well, I think this is a really Id bad idea. We should start over from scratch. is probably not going to be well received. Uh, if, but if you have, you know, uh, a new idea that's not really currently covered, then that that might be very well received. Um, so once you have, uh, you know, a solid idea, you have a little bit of documentation, you're able to clearly articulate your idea, then you want to talk to the area directors in the relevant area. They might send you to something called dispatch. Some work, some areas now have set up a process or a, a working group called the dispatch working group, which is a way to um, quickly decide, you know, uh, if somebody brings in a draft, does this draft, you know, is it something that needs a new working group? Is it something that could be covered by an existing working group? Is it something that we could do in the area, you know, without actually forming a working group? Is it something that's, that's fairly straightforward to do? Uh, so that is a, is a process to help expedite those kinds of discussions. Um, once you get to that point, then proposing, you know, propose a charter. Um, you need the drafts, you need a charter, you're going to need an agenda for a BOF, um, and then execute on the BOF. And then depending on the outcome of the BOF uh, would depend on what the next steps would be. Uh, there is a tutorial that was recently done on uh, bringing new work to the IETF and the slides in the video link are right there. I'd strongly encourage you to take a look at that. Um, and IETF session etiquette. Um, speak, uh, speak directly into the microphone. Uh, all of these meetings are, uh, you know, have remote participants and they are recorded. And so speaking into the microphone is very important. So, you know, people that stand up and aren't in the microphone, you know, anybody who's remote is not going to be able to hear them. Um, Say your name every time you speak at the microphone. Uh, generally, you go to the microphone and say, you know, I'm Karen and or I'm Karen O'Donohue uh, and go from there. There will be blue sheets and this is a record of, of who is in the room. Uh, remote participants also get recorded when you signed on for this meeting. Uh, you provided uh, your name. Uh, this is important for a number of reasons and, and uh, the blue sheets are scanned and become part of the permanent record of the meeting. Um, technical comments and questions are welcome. Obviously, uh, you know, time is of the essence. So, so uh, short, quite, um, you know, concise questions, uh, especially questions that, you know, if, if you have a question, more than likely somebody else in the room has the question as well. Uh, but not a question like, um, tell me how this works again. Uh, you know, a question along the lines of, you know, 
I see that you've decided to do this this way. Did you consider this other way? Uh, that would be a way. Um, there is a Jabber channel to discuss meeting rel relevant topics that you could use to ask questions as well. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about Jabber later on. This can be, it's a back channel way of, you know, discussing both the meeting and also the, um, you know, the technical topics of the meeting. And then also, you know, like the audio is not working or you know, those kinds of things are also sometimes discussed in there. And with that, resources, Rich? Sorry, I was muted. Yes, okay. Uh, closing in on the last third here. Um, okay, so the key people are, are the secretariat. Uh, mentioned them before, and we've mentioned them a couple of times. Uh, this is a professional organization that is employed by the ITF. Um, you'll recognize them by throughout the week. They'll all be wearing blue polo shirts. Um, they know uh, if you have a question, um, they're possibly the first people, non-technical question, as in where can I find this room? Or, you know, that grand ballroom is way too hot. Everybody's sweating and taking off their shirts. Um, the secretary is the people to talk to first. Um, by the end of the week, at the end of the week, at the last day, as they're starting to take down everything, um, they'll all be wearing Hawaiian shirts. But they're really very friendly, very professional, and know everything or can point you to everything about how the, the meeting or conference itself runs. Next page. Uh, the RFC editor and Anna staff. These people will have tables at this, in the same room that the registration is. So when you go, when you first arrive and go to pick up your badge and your t-shirt and your whatever tickets and so on, um, they'll have tables there and they will be there all week. The RFC editor is a group of, pardon me, uh, staff, paid staff and volunteers who um, turn the drafts into published documents. Uh, we did uh, a major revision of the formatting controls um, it, everything, if you look anything more than two years old, it always look, used to look like it was formatted from, you know, 66 characters wide line printer. Um, it now looks like modern, you know, web content. Uh, IANA is the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. These are the people who maintain the registries, which say, for example, uh, HTTP is TCP port 80, DNS is UDP port 53, um, and then also in within things such as here is uh, a specification of the extension for TLS. They just do all of the secretarial work for doing that to make sure that people don't tromp on each other and have conflicts. Um, generally, there's experts picked from the IETF assigned by the working group, but these guys keep the that registry up and available. Um, also, useful tip, both tables always have candy, often local candy, uh, the whole week. So if you need a quick sugar fix, stop by and say hi. Next page. Uh, the ITF executive director, uh, Jay Daly, we just, as I mentioned, we had, at the beginning, we had recently created the IETF corporation. Um, we had an interim executive director, Jay uh, who was sort of a professional executive director, not really familiar with what the IETF did or what its concepts were. Uh, Jay comes from um, ICANN DNS world, so he understands internet protocols and the importance of that. Um, he's, you know, he's a newcomer too. I don't think he'll be at the uh, tutorial on Sunday, but he'll be sort of walking around and at the um, general plenary that Karen mentioned, he'll, I'm sure he'll be introduced and say a few words. Uh, next. The ombudsman team. <clears throat> if you go through the note well and click on some of the links, um, the anti-harassment policy, we have a zero tolerance for harassment. If you see somebody being harassed or you see somebody doing it or you are the target of things, um, reach out to the ombuds team. Any one of the people here, here's their pictures. Um, if you go to the, you can, there's an email list, you can speak to the, um, 
partner the secretariat and find out where these people are in any given point. These are long time experienced IETFers who will uh, make sure the appropriate action is taken. Uh, I should have mentioned at the beginning, by the way, my name is Rich Sauls, my pronouns are he, his, right? All part of the anti-harassment stuff. Next slide, please. Uh, badges and dots and ribbons, oh my. Um, if you look in the upper right corner, um, this is what a badge will look like. Um, there's your name underneath in smaller print, your affiliation if you gave one. On top of your name are colored dots that represent various parties and interests of which you are a member. Um, the most important ones are probably blue for working group chair. Um, and then it's not labeled here, but the smiley face, which means I am available to answer questions. Feel free to ask me something. Many people have the smiley face. It's a checkbox you say when you register. Um, so if you see somebody, if you have a question about something, you see somebody with that, say, hi, I, you know, can you tell me how to do so-and-so or tell me where I can find this? The ribbons attach underneath. Um, there's a few that are still good, still useful. The host, people who paid, you know, thousands of dollars to host the meeting and pick up some of the expenses. The ombuds team, you'll see with bright green. Um, and then the others are, you know, the new attendees are useful. So you can find other people who are new, as I mentioned. Um, if you've been to one, five or fewer, you're still consider, you can still consider yourself to be new. Um, and then there's usually, uh, near the registration area, a bowl of ribbons and labels and people can write all sorts of funny jokes or not so funny jokes or, eh, it was funny the first time I saw it and now I've seen it four times. Uh, so the ribbons are li less useful except if you're looking for a particular thing. Um, and the, the colored dots at the top um, can be useful too. Next slide, please. Newcomer resources. Uh, the DAO of the ITF is sort of the novice's guide. It's sort of like, you know, deliberately taken from the, you know, Buddha, Buddhism. Um, it is a reasonably short document, a handful of pages that describes some of the history and how things are done within there. Um, it's informal. It was just recently revised by somebody who uh, had been involved in the privacy area and, 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 pol and politics of protocols area. Uh, the newcomers page, um, your one-stop shopping for all things about uh, the ITF. Um, the link is correct. The title obviously is off by one, it happens. The tutorials page will have uh, copies of the slides, including this one, this set. Um, after the meeting, it will have links to the videotapes of the slides, um, and it will have the names of the people like Carol and me who are giving them. Uh, next page. Uh, there's a meeting wiki often used for coordinating transportation or asking questions about the local environment. Um, for example, I'm a, you know, there'll be a sign up sheet, a sign up area, say I'm arriving, you know, at 10 p.m. Friday night, who else wants to share a cab ride to the hotel? Or I'm leaving 6 a.m. Friday morning, who wants to, you know, share an Uber or whatever back to, out to the airport? Uh, there's a first time attendees mailing list. If you're not on it, I encourage everyone to join. It's pretty low volume. And we'll have details about um, other activities, some of the ones Karen mentioned, um, and just as a general, hey, let's get together for lunch. And, you know, I, I met some people the other day, let's get together. Uh, sisters, Karen mentioned, social group, socially oriented group for, you know, people who present as women, female. Um, there's a bunch of other mailing lists. There's a social list, there's travel companions. We have a lightweight program for spouses or significant others who are coming along. Um, some self-organizing sightseeing trips and things like that. Uh, there is a meeting IETF 106-all for, you know, every participant gets the opportunity to join it. Um, the week before it becomes um, a bit, lot of discussion about looking for a travel ticket, want to travel, you know, social ticket, want a social ticket, have a social ticket to sell, how do I get a SIM card, uh, and so on. Um, 
local the local hosts read that and the wiki pretty well so that you can get your questions answered by local experts. Uh, next slide. Uh, two websites count the, are important as, as Karen mentioned. Uh, datatracker.ietf.org can also be abbreviated dt.ietf.org. Link on the left, sample page on the right. It has web pages for every single working group. Within every single group, there is a list of what it's about, pointers to the mailing lists, and then the big thing is a list of documents and their status. So you can see, you know, it's kind of hard to read on my screen, but you can see that, oh, this document has been progressed and is waiting for the RFC editor. As you get more involved, and hopefully you will, in writing drafts and so on, you might be interested in the tools page. Um, just mention that it exists. It has all sorts of interesting statistics about how many are, which RFCs are mentioned the most and things like that, you know, which people have authored the most RFCs. Kind of fun. Uh, as well as the data conversion tools from XML or Markdown to the RFC publication format. Uh, next slide, please. Remote participation. Um, we, you don't have to attend face, you don't have to attend. Um, certainly the November meetings, which are typically in Asia, tend to be more inconvenient for large portions of the attendees. Um, you can attend remotely. Every working group will have an online video conference set up like this, run by Medeco. Our organizer here is Tobiah, the third one on the right from the left. Um, we support remote attendance. We have Jabber, as, as uh, Karen mentioned. I think the next slide we'll talk a little bit more about that. And the Meet Echo is just browser-based video conferencing, communication, chat room, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. The network at the ITF is something else. Um, we run our own network. We make arrangements with the local telecom company. We bring in you know, all sorts of least temporary leased lines. We run it throughout the whole IETF hotel, usually. And this time, it's the hotel and the overflow. Um, there are uh, there's a whole bunch of network IDs that are available, IETF, IETF 64. If you do IPv6, all of the secure networks are user IETF, password IETF. The point is not for authenticate, but encryption. Um, there's a help desk in the registration area. There's a quiet room. We used to call it a terminal room. It no longer has terminals, but it's got power, Ethernet activity, and there's a way to enter service tickets um, if you have problems with the network or anything else. I'm speeding up because we're out of time. Next. Jabber uh, XMPP is a messaging protocol, instant messaging chat. Um, get a client, get an account. There's a couple places which to do it. Um, for Basically, every working group, as Karen mentioned, the DNS op working group will be DNS op at jabber.ietech.org. It's a chat room. Um, it's where remote people can, people participating remotely can ask questions. Um, it's where the scribe locally will say who's speaking and what page it is. That's why it's important to state your name every time you come to the mic. Uh, next slide. So I think this is the final one. Uh, enjoy yourself. And it's all the smiling, happy faces here. Uh, the picture of fireworks was one of the Prague meetings where we actually, at the end of the social event, they had fireworks. That was pretty, really impressive. <laughs> um, it's a fun time. It's an exhausting time. You relieve with your head full uh, and hopefully uh, lots of scribbles and notes um, and follow up things to do to meet with and talk with new colleagues. I uh, look forward to meeting many of you, and I think we're just about out, so I'm not sure if we have room for questions. If, you, if there's things we missed, either as you figure it out during the week, um, contact us at edu-team, edu-team. Um, Thursday morning is a feedback session, and we really would like a survey uh, for, this is a survey specifically for the newcomers, We'll have a general, the secretariat will run a general survey after the meeting for all attendees to talk about things like the open time, what was it like, how many conflicts did you notice in terms of when you wanted to attend two different meetings at the same time, and so on. 
So. All right, I think that brings us to the end. I don't know if there's any questions. I've been monitoring the chat and I haven't seen any questions show up. Um, I did post uh, in the chat the the, a link to the slides. These slides are available online um, at, at that link. So with that one typo corrected. <laughs> I just yes. didn't send it. <laughs> right, it's 106, no, we missed one. Yeah. So uh, with that, we really appreciate uh, you joining us. Um, and if there are no questions, we will uh, adjourn. Okay, thanks. Go to sleep, Tobias. <laughs>